when I face my fellow Mexican, Abner Mares. It is for my family, for my fans, in this great sport. Only one of us can be the best. I'm Abner Mares. I've been the champion in three divisions. In 30 professional fights, I have 29 wins. But I want more. I will prove that I am the best in my division. And right now, there is one man standing in my way. The undefeated Leo Santa Cruz. excitement heartbeat of the Western United States. It is a melting pot of cultures amid the backdrop of Hollywood, the movies, the center of all the major excitement and big sports. Basketball, hockey, baseball, and best of all tonight, boxing. Two stars destined to meet in this time and place wage a highly anticipated battle that was made for LA at the Staples Center. We welcome you inside, Leo Santa Cruz and Abner Mares, for battle for a featherweight championship set for 12 rounds. Mexican raised, Los Angeles made. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Bontempo along with my pal and partner, Joey Varner. And Joey, here in Los Angeles, they have been salivating for this fight. Salivating in the streets, salivating outside the arena, and salivating in their seats inside the arena. Dave, here in the arena, the energy is palpable. A lot more on the stake than just a winner or loss for both these two fighters. This truly is the battle for Los Angeles. Three division champion, two division champion. They meet up here at 126. The combined record, 59 and one, 32 knockouts. As you look at Leo Santa Cruz, who is installed as slightly more than a two to one favorite. And anytime in boxing, if you get odds two to one uh, or you know, close to even money. This is almost a pick em fight. It truly is a pick em and you gotta look at the the, the, the unspoken uh, truth of the matter here is the only reason Leo, uh, Leo Santa Cruz is the favor in this fight is because of the uh, knockout loss at the hands of Johnny Gonzalez to Abner Mares. Without that loss, an undefeated Abner Mares would definitely be the favor in this fight, but Leo Santa Cruz not just the favorite, he's got some other advantages. He's the taller fighter, he's the younger fighter, he's also got a reach advantage. And he's moving up in weight though, and that's what the Mars people are saying. Hey, he's coming up to 126, and that's my territory. He's coming up from 122, and people say, hey, four pounds, that's nothing. In this division, that's a lot. And that's the guy holding on at 126. After Mars, this guy, actually both fighters for, for that fact, have never been accused of being in a boring fight. And both the fighters leading into this match promised fight of the year performance tonight. I'll tell you what, you can feel it in the crowd. This crowd is really split 50-50. It's a, it's a half Mares crowd, a half Leo Santa Cruz crowd. I think no matter what, though, we are all in, in store for a great treat this evening. Look at this. Mares, a champion at 118, 122, and 126 pounds. Guys like Eric Morrell and Ponce de Leon. And Santa Cruz, a champion at 118 and 122. He is still a champion at 122 yeah. as he comes up at 126 for something called a super championship, which is another version of the belt. So no risk for him. And we're also going to see to start the show, Hugo Ruiz and Julio Cesar Ceja, super bantamweight championship set for 12 rounds. And these are also guys with glittering credentials. Glitter credentials, both fighters, heavy handed, high output, high hard punching. You've got Ruiz who has 35 wins, two losses, but 31 of those victories have come by way of knockout. And in the blue corner on the other side, we've got Julio Cesar Ceja, who's got 29 victories, one loss, and 26 knockouts. Two action packed fighters, and for the little guys, they pack a mean punch. Ceja's only loss came in a Bantamweight Championship fight to Jamie McDonald, who, uh, that name sound familiar? We're going to see him next week <laughs> in Texas. We'll be talking more about that throughout the show as the fighters getting warmed up. Ruiz and Seha. This is a, what you like to see, the sweat the on sweat. a guy. Never want to see a man enter the ring cold. 
what they, take a look at how Ruiz got here going back to 2014 and the only loss uh, we mentioned uh, Pokey Kameda one of his major losses along with uh, Jamie McDonald very good portfolio absolutely absolutely Back in, November, back in November of 2014, he got the win by the TKO over Fidelin, and also a, a win over Ramon Mayas, TKO in, in uh, March of 2014. Then going back to September of 2013, he decisioned Julio Cesar Miranda, also decisioned Giovanni Caro, and then we go all the way back to 2012, and we see that loss, split decision loss, actually, to uh, Koki Kameda. Four wins since then, and that loss to Kameda was four. 118 pound championship so got a big win in 2010 which occurred a little before that graphic a superfly division victory so another big win for him was the Miranda one which you do see there he's a pro since 2006 record of 35 and two three knockouts and comes in here should have a little bit of a reach advantage as well he's from Los Mochis in Mexico so this is also an all Mexico battle not guys made in Mexico and then coming here these guys still are from Mexico two Mexican purebreds as we look backstage we see Julio Cesar say how warming up getting loose and another one like Dave pointed out with Ruiz sweat on the brow glistening looking ready for war tonight and he's won five fights in a row since losing that title bout to McDonald. It also shows you never know what you're going to see when you come in with the judges. Take a look at the last five that he's had since the loss. He has been on his game. Absolutely. Back in March, he got a unanimous decision win over Oscar Blanket. Also in November, took out by a knockout Lionel Mark Duran. Also took out Reino Suke with a knockout in April of 2014. In February 2014, he took out Jesus Acosta also by way of TKO. And going back to October 13th, Juan Jose Montez also tasted the canvas at the hands of Julio Cesar Ceja. And just before that, you shake your head and you look at what goes on with the judging. And his loss, 113-115. 114, 114, and then 110, 118. Wow. So you just never know what kind of disparity that you're going to see. And in many of his fights since then, he's been able to take the judges out of it. And 26 knockouts and 29 fights. That's one way that you can always be guaranteed. You're not going to be surprised by how they are looking at it. So these are the guys who are up next and fighting for an interim 122 Pound championship scheduled for 12 rounds. See the record 35 and 2 with 30 knockouts, 28 and 126 knockouts. We've got an excited crowd this evening ready for action packed fights. to go Hugo Ruiz and Julio Cesar. Say hi. Super Bantamweight Championship. These guys are very highly regarded. Ruiz is number one in the WBC at 122 pounds. And Say hi is number three. So you 
you see guys fighting for a title, you like to see them up there high in the rankings. Absolutely. Going in. Goodwill from Ruiz. Good the crowd. Patito, listo. Deja checar, Patito. A tirar chingadazos, eh. Traes el mouthpiece, eh, maestro. Ahí lo traes, me lo deja ver, por favor. Antes de cada salto, te voy a hacer a ti. Para que me sigas el mouthpiece, para estar seguro que no. begins with 12 rounds in the junior featherweight division. The three judges ringside are Kathy Leonard, Craig Metcalf, and Alejandro Rochin. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds, Raul Caiz Sr. Introducing first out of the red corner, wearing Los Colores de Mexico. As a professional, his record stands at 29 wins, 26 of those coming by way of knockout, opposite one defeat, representando a DC Fan Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, Julio Cesar Pollito Ceja. Across the ring, his opponent out of the blue corner, wearing the green with the gold trim. His professional record, 35 wins, 31 of those by KO, opposite two defeats. Desde Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. Presentando Hugo Cuatito Ruiz. Pollito. Bate. Ok, caballeros, les di las instrucciones allá abajo. Los golpes aquí van a estar perfectamente bien. Traen el calzón un poquito alto. Cuidado con las cabezas, buena suerte y a la esquina espera la campana. Buena suerte a los dos. Well, they understood that. Mexico, basically. Fighters in LA, here's the tail of the tape. Reach advantage for Ruiz. And age, 28 versus 22. Let's see how the height and reach numbers work for Hugo Ruiz. That's one of our storylines. Listo, we're going to look at in this fight. Listo, Pate. The Pate Tempo and Joey Varner with you here in Los Angeles. And welcome to the show. that battle right away whether Ruiz can establish that reach and use it well. You saw early Seha come out with two pawing jabs and uh, Ruiz answered back at a longer distance with a quick snapping jab. 
Just touched his forehead, didn't really pop it. But he did it at a distance that is conducive for him to control the center of the ring and control the action of this fight. Say how will be trying to duck inside that jab, but he must do so the right way because he just walked into a left hook. And you've seen Ruiz a couple times. Cock back and fire that left hook. Crisp, tight, hasn't made contact, but it's been there. Good body shot by Ruiz. Say how trying to get inside. So far, Ruiz could see everything coming at him from Seha and has some good countering opportunities. Yes, Seha definitely wants to get inside of Ruiz. That's where he's going to have a better chance of winning this fight. But he can't just walk in. He's got to punch him. He's got to move his head off that center line and work his way on the inside, work his way into the pocket. But it's going to be hard to do with Ruiz firing that jab and also that counter left hook. He's landed that counter left hook to the body and just missed landing it to the head. He has sent the message to Seha that there's a cover charge coming in here. <laughs> Seha's connect with those last two punches. Yeah, nice hook, and then there's the uppercut by Ruiz. As Seha moved in to try and parlay what he had done. A beautiful countering opportunity for Ruiz. These guys are banked. I knock out record for both. So we come to the end of the opening round, and it's been a good one. And here we take a look back at some of that action, and there's the overhand right from Seha. Luis tries to counter, but Seha's just outside of distance when he does it. Here we see Seha coming in. And there Ruiz was trying to hit him with the counter hook, but it was Seha who got off first and landed his left hook. Second round action scheduled for 12. Hugo Ruiz and Julio Cesar Seja. Good opening round for Ruiz is in the darker, more complete green. It's on the right of your screen. 35 and 230 knockouts. They had 28 and 1, 26 knockouts. And in that opening round, Joey, sometimes we see power punchers might be cautious because they respect the power of the other guy. But these guys came out and they let it go. Both fighters let it go. Both fighters trying and finding limited success at finding homes with the left hook. Seha did a better job. He actually stumbled Ruiz a little bit. I don't think it was a, a, a damaging punch, but more of a. Ruiz was hit and off balance. Um, but Ruiz has thrown a couple crisp, crisp, sharp left, hook, left hooks that haven't found their mark yet. But what did find his mark, Dave, was that nice right uppercut. Ruiz did a great job timing Seha moving his head right in that center line and snapped it back. And Seha, who walked into the money punch from a slugger, was able to withstand that. That was a good sign for him because he was Drilled right on the button. Now Seha trying to pull his way 
Manos libres, manos libres, chance. háganse para atrás, tienen golpes. Of the wings. And you've got a, an interesting contrast of styles here when you see Ruiz, more of a sharpshooter. Elbows in tight, punches coming straight cabeza, lines, cabeza, very crisp. Abusado. Ruiz gets a little, or excuse me, Seha gets a little loopy with his punches, dips on the outside, fires overhands and kind of loopy hooks. But he's been landing at a higher frequency of the two. And the idea that he has to dip and fire those shots, overcoming that reach disadvantage, that ends up being the first part of the strategy. And then how about positioning for how you throw your punches from that standpoint if it's something you're not comfortable doing? Yeah, you know what, that's the thing is, is Seha definitely needs to move his head off that center, center line to avoid the straight punch from Ruiz. But he's got to bring it back in that center line to counter, which puts him right back into position to get hit. So you see a lot of what we just saw right there is after he slips on the outside or dips to the outside, he'll counter. And when he comes back to that center, he'll roll out either to the left or right. And it's been a good second round for Seha. So a good first round for Ruiz and a good bullying second round or Seha. Para en la campana. Tiempo. And then we take a look back at some action for the previous round. Ruiz, beautiful jab to the body, follows it right upstairs over the left hand of Seahoff with a straight right cross, straight to the chin of Seahoff. Third round action, Hugo Ruiz and Julio Ceja. Locked up in a good one at 122 pounds. Dave Bontempo and Joey Varner with you here on Premier Boxing Champions in Los Angeles. Good matchup of number one and number three in the WC's BC's version of the 122 pound champion. Oh, and another right uppercut lands inside just after their accidental clash of the heads. Ruiz stopped to kind of touch his forehead and complain about it. Say how opened up and Ruiz just slipped that right up and right up the middle. And Dave, what we're seeing right now is that style matchup we talked about of the straight punches of Ruiz versus the loopy punches of Seha. Ruiz is starting to find his timing. He's starting to find his distance because he's pot shotting and picking up shots. As Seha opens up with a loop, a loopy punch, Ruiz is doing a good job of beating him with a center shot and a straight or an uppercut down the middle before the loopy punch of Seha can land. And what's making this more interesting is that Seha is getting braver. And that's the truth. Every time that, that he has been countered, that he has been hit, he has been punched coming in, he seems that it brings him alive. He presses the action more. He starts firing more punches and coming harder at Ruiz than with, with the punching onslaught. Left hook by Seha. Ruiz trying to keep him off with the jab, but knows that he has to do something in the power department to keep Seha honest. He's doing a great job of making Seha pay every time Seha comes in. He's just touching him with quick little counter shots. You saw a minute ago, he slipped right outside that cross, just like he did there. He pulled off that right hand and landed a left hand over the top of his own. Good shots by both the left hook by Ruiz and the straight right by Seha. Good left hook and down goes Seha as he walked into trouble. Just like in round one. He said he was getting braver. Maybe a little too brave there. How does Ruiz feel about this opportunity? Seha did get up quickly. Does he try to go for the finish? Or does he believe that Seha is okay? Terrific hook by Ruiz. Opening 
up. Seha hands down. Dangerous spot and a big right hand by Ruiz. The belt can't save you, but for Seha, it would be divine intervention. And here, let's take a look back at that knockdown. You see that right hand comes, and just as Seha comes rushing in, eats the left hook, tastes the canvas. Another look at it here, we see it. And like we talked about in the previous round, Seha opens up with the loopy punches. It's the shorter, tight punches of Ruiz that make their mark first. Fireworks in the building. We start round four. Luis William Seha. Knocked down in round three by Ruiz. Seha shrugs it off as if it's yesterday's news. Two guys with big knockout records in their fighting market. 30 knockouts and 37 fights for Ruiz. For Seha, 26 knockouts and 29 fights. If you take away the punch power of both fighters, the style matchup is very similar to what we're going to see in our main event. And what I mean is Leo Santa Cruz, you know, is a pressure fighter who more, throws more loopy punches, and after Mars is the more sharp, polished, insider, in, inside prison fighter. Um, only difference, though, is that Ruiz, in this case, has the reach advantage, and Mares would have the reach disadvantage in this fight with Leo Santa Cruz. Some things will be the same, some will vary a bit. As you look at the attack from Seha, and you know, that knockdown in the last round. The thing that really made it happen for Ruiz was the quick shift in feet yeah. after, after his opponent missed because he wasn't really in position. He sort of shifted his weight quickly to just get that hook in. Yep. So for Ruiz, Thinking on his feet, enabled him to knock Seha off of his feet. Good hook by Seha. Seha not fighting this round like a man who was almost knocked out in the previous. No, he's getting drilled like he did at certain points in that last round. He's opening up, taking his chances. When you're a slugger, do you know any other way? Right. Look at all the knockouts. 26 knockouts in 29 fights. How do you turn him into a stylist all of a sudden? To a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. It and also you means see a guy like this is never out of a fight well, from a power stand. And you see Seha trying to hammer oh, away at Ruiz, but he gets oh, nailed every right? time he does. Cut by Seha. So as we come to the end of round four, Seha continues to get drilled, but keeps coming forward. Pressing forward, Ruiz doing a good job of countering as he comes in. 
Nice jab, cross, doubles it up, jab, cross, hook. Mark Ruiz trying to fire as he's moving backwards. Seha just coming forward, unloading punches as he does. No lo hagas por nada. Hazlo por ti. Vamos. Vamos, hijo. Vamos, pollo. Vamos, hijo. Demuéstralo. Good matchup between Hugo Ruiz and Julio Ceja. Heads into round five. Scheduled for 12. It's an interim 122 pound championship on the line. Already one knockdown in this fight. Registered by Ruiz against Seha. Wild miss here by Seha. Now he's got the power. How does he effectively get himself in position to maximize his punching opportunities? Well, what he's doing right now to get in position is he's punching in the position. But the problem is, is that every time he's trying to punch in the position, he's getting countered and picked apart as he comes in. Another way to do it instead of punching in the position is move your head into position, cut Ruiz off, bully Ruiz with your footwork and your head movement into the corner against the ropes. And when you get him there, unleash to tack to his body and then go upstairs to the head. But his, 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 current, his current strategy no is, is cabeza, punching no his no way in. But he's getting picked apart as he does. No it. A couple of different ways to do it. When, when guys bob and weave to get inside and then slip to, to get into punching position, we see some guys, they're in perfect position after they get inside. And some guys, it throws off their positioning so, 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 by so, so, working so, so, inside. Then they have no shot. Right. Afuera, afuera, tirar golpes. And that's one of those things you talked about when Ruiz knocked down Seha was that, was that last minute adjustment with his footwork, adjusting his feet. And that's one of the things Seha's going to have to do when he gets inside, is adjust those feet, keep those feet under you as a punch, but also adjust, make those little split-second adjustments as your distance changes, as your opponent moves. Good paced battle here. Good hook and down goes Ruiz! You knock me down, I knock you down. What a terrific fight between the number one and number three contenders at 122. And here comes Seha thinking this is his opportunity. You don't know how many you're going to get. He opens up, trying to make his case to the referee. Now the big hook. Ruiz is in deep trouble. Smart enough to hang on, a lot of time to kill, and that's it, he can't kill it! Sudden opportunity, and sudden victory for Julio Cesar Seja. When you've that's got a knockout wow. power in both hands, you're always in the fight, and I'll tell you what, up to that point, Ruiz had done a phenomenal job of keeping his right hand nice and hot. He caught the majority of the left hooks that Seha threw. The one time he let it down, he paid for it. He paid for it with a knockout loss. And what's unique about it is, you see the recuperative powers of these guys. Another 28 seconds, if Ruiz gets through that, maybe that minute helps him. But, Seha smart enough to know that was the window. Well, take, take nothing away from, from the punching power of Seha, but Ruiz didn't make the best defensive decision when he got up from the canvas. Seha hopped up over Ruiz, and instead of covering, trying to time up here, let's take a look at it, and you see the right hand nice and light, it trained left hooks. The left hook of Seha finds its mark, it's a money shot. Here's another shot of that same punch. Left hook's trade right on the button, on the chin. You see the jaw snap back. Right hand, left hook finds his mark earlier. Seha got to the punch first. Oh. Up until this point, it's been Ruiz landing the punch first. Seha gets there first right on the button, sending Ruiz crashing to the canvas. Don't hook with a with hooker. hooker. <laughs> and here, this is what I was talking about, Davey B, is as Ruiz gets up from the canvas, Seah hops all over him, and 
off instinct probably, Ruiz obliges him to try to start trading back. Instead of covering up, instead of trying to tie him up, instead of trying to buy some more time, he started punching back, which inevitably led to him getting knocked out. I have to adopt uh, what was called the Tommy Hearns philosophy in one of his fights. Uh, he was dropped by James Kinchin and he was trying to hold on. And he said, I held on to him like he was my girlfriend. <laughs> And to buy 30 more seconds, oh, that's what he would have had to do. But that's the beauty of this sport. The window opens, some guys storm through, some guys don't. And Seha is able to do that. That's going to make our honor roll. Fights on the career boxing champion circuit. At least uh, on the knockouts side. What's really appealing about this matchup is that you had two guys who were punchers and they decided to fight that way. Yeah, they didn't adjust based on the fact that they could get hit. So they made it a fan's fight. Raul Cain Sr. waves off the bat for your winner by knockout Julio Cesar Boyito Ceja. There he is being congratulated by WBC President Mauricio Suleiman. As he now has that earned interim belt, 122. That's Leo Santa Cruz official. So we don't know what interim means. Does it mean Leo wants it back? Does it mean when Mauricio says he gives it back? And right now he's a champion. And what a way to do it. Wow. Coming off the canvas, he takes it to the canvas in the third round. He was getting outpunched, he was getting picked apart. Stayed with his attack, he stayed with his pressure. He went to that left hook, he kept firing it, kept firing it. Ruiz hooked with the hooker and went to sleep because of it. Certainly did, and the point you were making so true, man. You're not used to being down. You need to hang on for dear life after that. But he was unable to do that, and so it suddenly went his against him. Now, it certainly looked like his fight in round three. Here we see it. There's that counter. It was the left hook of Ruiz. The counter left hook of Seha that sent Seha to the canvas. And unlike Seha later in the round, Ruiz could have put him away. And here we see the fourth round trading punches. Seha fresh off the canvas. Looking none the worse for wear, still pressing forward, still looking to land that big left hook. Ruiz obliging as they trade punches. Ruiz getting the better of the exchanges here in the fourth round. And then in the fifth round, this happens. They trade left hooks. Ruiz doesn't make it in time. Sejas finds its mark, sends Ruiz crushing to the canvas. Ruiz gets up and tries to trade right again. And there we take a look at the same punch. And here's the end of the fight. Ruiz trying to punch back, trying to trade. Now he's just moving his head. And Seha opening up, unloading on him, going to the body, digging to the body. And let's capture something else that we get another look at here. How about Seha creating punching room for himself by backing up each time beautiful. before he went back in there, thinking on his feet in that heated situation, moving back, so that he couldn't smother himself and that he couldn't be tied up. And that's just what we talked about in the previous round where the adjustments he had to make were those footwork adjustments. Making those split seconds adjustment with your feet, creating more space or taking away more space. One more thing I love too was the continuous follow-up attack to the body. That's really what sent Ruiz crashing into the corner before the referee called the fight. It was that body attack. He went back downstairs. Instead of continuing upstairs, he went back downstairs and ripped five, six hard shots to the rib cage, to the solar plexus of Ruiz. And that, in the end, was what made Ruiz crash into that corner, and the referee hopped in to stop the action. Well, as we look, at, we'll get some bonus coverage here. Alejandro Luna and Sergio Lopez have that fight coming up, courtesy of Julio Cesar Seha. <laughs> they can thank him for the TV time they're going to get.
But that was just uh, set the buzz through this crowd. That's what you just love to see. Great fight. The opportunity there, and a guy knowing, end of the round, going for it right here, and he may pay for it later by not finishing the job, but he sees the chance to try and get it there. at 122. Live on ESPN from Staples Center, Premier Boxing Champions now feature six rounds in the lightweight division. The three judges scoring ringside are Eddie Hernandez, Pat Russell, and Zachary Young. And There's the referee in charge Luna when the bell sounds, Lopez. Dr. Lou Moret. Introducing first out of the red corner, wearing the green and the red. His professional record, 18 wins, nine losses, one draw, a dozen wins come in by KO. Fighting out of Ensenada, Mexico. Here is Sergio Lopez. His opponent out of the blue corner, wearing the white with the gold trim. His professional record undefeated, 18 wins, 13 of those coming by knockouts. Fighting out of Whittier, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alejandro El Charro. Luna is a pro since 2010. Has a win over Daniel Hata. Had a victory in an eight round company. So let's see how these swing fighters takes to their task. Luna and Lopez. Lopez more of a journeyman at 18 and 9. This is the world of the Minutemen. And you, you can already see the, the difference in the, the caliber of the fighter. Just the leap exchange we've seen. You see Lopez leaping in with his face forward, opening up before he throws his punches. Luna much more compact, polished, hands nice and light, nice, picking his shots. Luna has a win over the former champion, Cristobal Cruz. In his last outing, it was an eight round win, and that's the longest fight of his career. Now going from eight to six, which is interesting. Usually after eight, he'd go up to 10. I wonder if that was uh, the opponent. The opponent, maybe to fit into a TV schedule. Okay. A couple of those things. If you agree to be a swing fight, maybe you don't get as much money because of the round you fight, but you get better exposure. So, all kinds of possibilities there. But these guys, we're expecting to fight maybe an hour from now. Right. After the Mahrez fight. Then because of the short nature of the previous fight, they get summoned in. Now, how about keeping yourself semi-warmed up, semi-fresh? Which they both managed to do. Here. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the hard things about being that swing bout. You know, you really have to keep getting up every four or five minutes and reactivating that sweat. Staying literally five minutes away from being ready to walk out. You need to compare it to other sports if you like a relief pitcher in baseball. Have to get up, throw just in case it's in. Yeah. A couple of innings later, do it again. Exactly. You see, you know, I talked about a minute ago with the style of Lopez leaping in with his face first. Because of that, we see a couple of almost clashing heads and an actual clash of heads. Just right there. Good hook. And there's a cut over the left eye of Luna. I believe it came from that little flash of hands. Did you see a punch on that, Dave? No, it did look like the flash. Be interesting to see how it is ruled. That's sensitive territory now for Luna early on. And you see blood on the left temple of Lopez, which is where it would be if he 
head butted. It has that look. Yes. Leading claims there, Sergio Moore. We 
get ready for round three. Alejandro Luna and Sergio Lopez in the lightweight division, scheduled 4 6. Dave Bontempo and Joey Warner with you from Los Angeles on Premier Boxing Champions. Leo Santa Cruz and Abdul Mares is after this. Luna's cracking Lopez with solid shots. I just don't think he has enough pop as much to put Lopez to sleep. Lopez just solid stiff left hand that can hear. A little more 10 feet away from the ring and you hear him cracking. But you don't see the legs of Lopez buckling. You don't see the neck or the head of Lopez snapping back. Now you can work on things, but you really can't give him that power. No, there, you, you, know, you, you can try to develop the power you're given, but some guys just aren't built you know, with, more with that sleep in their fist. And as I say it, he, he puts a touch of sleep on the chin of Lopez, who's gallantly trying to fight back, but definitely you saw the legs buckle. But Luna smothered himself today. You know, just like we saw in that previous fight, when Seha had Ruiz hurt, he created a little space for himself. Did not smother him. himself. He did not smother himself. And here when Luna had Lopez hurt, he smothered him. He need to take that half step back, keep that distance right from the land those solid power punches. Good left hook and a right hand from Luna. Now he's had an interesting point in his career about the power label on him. 18 and 0, 13 knockouts. What what type of uh, power rating in a one to ten scale would you give him at this point? Well, you know, it's, it's you got a guy in Lopez who's been beat nine times, who has 18 wins as well. I wouldn't consider him, you know, a, a stern test. And he's landed, he's cracked him with some really hard shots throughout this fight. It hasn't dropped. You saw a little bit. You hear it. You heard that, that right one. hand crack. But look at the legs of Lopez. Look at the eyes of Lopez. Look at the posture. You know, he doesn't look any worse for it. He doesn't look like that, that shot did any damage. So, you know, when you got a guy who's coming up and you see he's 15, 15 wins, 16 wins, 17 wins, and he's got 12, 13 knock knockouts, you're wondering, you know, okay, is he a boxer puncher? But then as he gets to the 18, 19, 20, where, where they start stepping up the competition, the challenge, but those knockouts, they still remain at 12 minutes. You know he's just not a heavy-handed fighter. As we get to the halfway mark of this one. Tempo! Just unloads, continues the barrage, the beatdown until the referee is forced to, to 
to stop the fight. That was a nice argument in favor of being more of a puncher <laughs> than a boxer because we're on the on the cusp with we're him. On the cusp. And he came out with determination. Even, and even a, a, he a sensed something is right twice as if he had found something in that body shot. Yeah, absolutely. And here's another thing, though. Well, let's take a look back at the, the end of the fight. You see Luna just all over Lopez. You see that left hook of the body stop Lopez in his tracks. It drew his hands downstairs, and there it is. You see, he puts both hands downstairs. Luna goes back upstairs. It just unloads a fury of punches to the face of Lopez until the referee comes and saves the day. And he had distance going for him when he started to pour through those let's go, let's go. shots. There's the sportsmanship angle. Ladies and, go to ladies and gentlemen, 19 ladies and gentlemen, 14 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 34 seconds of the fourth round of referee in charge. Dr. Lou Moretz waves off the bout for your winner by knockouts and still undefeated, Alejandro and Charo Luna. TKO victory as the referee stopped it. So, Luna puts on a good show. Well, you know, we talked about punching power, and I referenced sleep in the fist, pop in the punch, a knockout artist, that he may not be. There's another kind of power. It's that overwhelming power. It's the barrage of punches that slowly break an opponent down. Luna demonstrated he does have that kind of punching power here tonight. How, what he can do with it, how far it will carry him, time will tell. Depending on the matchup, the situation, and uh, how much he develops. As a fighter, this 23-year-old, but a nice, nice win for him. Comes through in favor role. That will set the stage. they've been waiting for. Mares and Santa Cruz. One of those fights, I just mentioned their last names. You had a lot of people excited about it. strangers to each other. Not only are they both Mexican-Americans, not only are they both Los Angeles raised, they're sparring partners. They actually had about 30 rounds history sparring together. Uh, Leo Santa Cruz actually said after that experience of sparring with Abner Mars, he actually started asking for that fight. They told him, no, you're not good enough, you're not a big enough name. But he said he's been calling out Mares for the last three years. Mares says for the last year, I've been calling out Leo Santa Cruz. Well, both men, they get their wish tonight. No one needs to call anyone out. They can't even agree on who was pulled out. <laughs> yeah, right. Just like, you know they can't agree on the spar. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they both won that. Abdo Mares, 29, one and one. Represented Mexico at the 2004 Olympics. Lost in his first fight there. He is 5-1-1 one one in world title fights and trained by Nancio Ferristain, who has also had Juan Manuel and Rafael Marquez. And this trainer is in the World Boxing Hall of Fame. Ferristain also had Oscar De La Hoya and Johnny Gonzalez. 
look across the way at Leo Santa Cruz, handled by Roberto Garcia, who himself was a 130 pound champion back in 1998. Santa Cruz is 7-0 with three knockouts in world title fights. 5-0 with four knockouts against champions. Jose Lopez, Eric Farrell, Alexander Munoz, Christian Mahares, and Victor Terrasas. That's a, a good group of guys to have a 5-0 record against. Not bad at all. Considers himself a relentless type of a puncher. More in line with what he believes the Mexican fans want. So pretty soon, they'll do it. You'll see it. We'll call it. And the crowd uh, come in. Well supported. Leo Santa Cruz vintage work. In some of his fights leading up, you see how we talked about him being a stylist, how he keeps his distance on the outside. Yes. Will he be able to keep that distance tonight and control matters? He uses his credentials well, and you see part of the journey that got him here. He's got the unanimous win over Quintano, knockout over Ruiz, knockout over Roman, knockout over Mijares, unanimous decision, excuse me, over Mijares, and unanimous decision over Seda. Comes in off of that unanimous decision victory in his last. Santa Cruz has been cruising. Minus 225 on the line, so plenty more than a two to one favorite. The pro since 2006. Abner Morris is a pro since 2005. Won an IBF championship. 118 against Joseph Agbeko. 122 pound title against Eric Moreau. And Ponce de Leon at 126. That's a nice lineup of guys to win titles against. When you look at who they both faced, you gotta say Amaris has definitely faced the stiffer, stronger competition. And he's the guy the weight class, a little bit more of the natural. He's had three wins since a knockout loss to Johnny Gonzalez in the first round. Here we see back in March, he got the unanimous decision win over Reyes. Of course, win over Ramirez, decision win over Okendo, and there it is, the one that leaps out of you, the only blemish on his record, the knockout loss in the first round at the hand of Johnny Gonzalez. So the high water mark had been the De Leon fight where he won his third title. Loses it to Gonzalez, then has three more wins, all at the MGM, and one of them was the first fight in our PBC series in March. You, myself, Daniel Jacobs. Daniel Jacobs, who's got a tough one coming up in December. Daniel Jacobs taking on Kid Chocolate. You and I will be there calling that fight. That's been six months now for this series. See the highlights. Six month anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, Joe. <laughs> We've been here six magical months. Really has been something for the boxing fan. An upset win. Title changing hands a couple weeks ago. Wolbachki. Poland. Beating Hook. We see Jamie McDonald again next week in Texas. We said he'd never go back after we were stuck there. <laughs> Hidalgo in May. A 
I'll tell you what, that, that Kovacic fight, for me, that's definitely a candidate for fight of the year. It really was. What a phenomenal fight. And for, I think, fight of the uh, of PBC's six months. That's, that's high in that's my list for the honor roll. Yes, it is. A couple weeks ago, back in Newark. Santa Cruz and Mara is next. And yeah, we opened the series in, in March with Keith Thurman. Had a lot of good fights along the way. Some titles changing hands. Durrell losing. Both Durrells losing. Both brothers losing. Stars emerging. In that last fight, I mean, the first fight, Hugo Ruiz and, and Seha. Wow, that was, that was an awesome fight. That definitely goes on the honor roll list as well. That's uh, two guys who were highly ranked and both sluggers, and they fought that way. Santa Cruz, 7-0 with three knockouts in world title fights. Likes of Jose Lopez, Eric Morrell, Anthony Munoz, Durantes, Mahares. Got our battle lines drawn. Battle for LA. Great to history in this city. Whether it's the Dodgers in baseball, Magic Johnson in basketball, the Kings, Stanley Cup champions. Oscar De La Hoya, right here from Los Angeles. Will we see a, a De La Hoya Chavez as we fight tonight? Will we see more of a, a war? That was definitely a one sided beat down of De La Hoya asserting his claim as the Mexican champion. Or will we see more of an Eric Morales, Marco Antonio Guerrero war for the ages? That's what I'm hoping for, brother. Get every indication you're going to get that war. But yeah. that's how you feel going in. Beautiful overhead look at the Staples Center. This really is a fight fans venue, not a bad seat in the house. Anywhere you are, you got great, great eyes on the action. Nice evening look at Los Angeles, downtown LA. We are in the heart of it. And there's the traffic at all hours. <laughs> it wouldn't be L.A. without the traffic. They started to come to the fight on Tuesday. They still haven't gotten here yet. That song, L.A. is a great big freeway. Once you get here, thousands here tonight. Cruz is 30-0, one draw, 17 knockouts. Draw came early in his career. Mares is 29-1-1. So between them, 59 and 1. Featherweight Championship, 126 pounds. What about the uh, weight? Now Santa Cruz is the, is the favorite, but he's coming up to 26. Coming up to 26. Talk about that factor. Now we're going to see, you know, what would you call him a, we talked about punching power in the previous fight. Um, I definitely would call him a knockout artist. I think he's a volume puncher, but how much pop that volume will have, we're gonna find out moving up in a weight class. I know that moving up and not being a big puncher, I think those plays into the confidence of Abner Mares, who I don't care who you are, when he starts like he got stars by Johnny Gonzalez, the knockout is always in the back of your head. So I think he'll come in here a little more confident, knowing that he doesn't have to face all with that much devastating one punch power. His head never goes away. Now Daniel Jacobs, who worked with us on our first show,
Okay, he was knocked out, then went on and won a championship. What are the kinds of things a guy has to put away and put out of his mind to get that at least far enough in his mind that he can go on and win a championship after? Well, you know, you talked about Daniel Jacobs, and you remember in his last fight against Sergio Mora, he won by knockout, but those memories came flooding back in us because he got dropped in that second round. You know, so I think it's always in the back of your mind how prevalent it is, how far away it is. I think it depends on who you're fighting and how much time you've had since the knockout happened and the opponent since then. If you've faced a couple of power punches, you've tasted some shots, you've gone through without really receiving too much damage, not getting dropped again, that builds your confidence, you know? I think never to the point of where it was before you got knocked out, but where you feel confident in a firefight. But I'll tell you what, though. For some guys, keeping that in the back of their head makes them sharper. It can do a great service to someone to make them avoid those firefights. Sensible paranoia. Sensible paranoia, exactly. Take a look at how they match up on the tail of the tape. Santa Cruz, two years younger. Santa Cruz, a little bit of height and reach. Three inches of reach, considerable. He can use it. Champions now presents the main event live on ESPN. 12 rounds for the Featherweight Championship. The three judges ringside arm, Max DeLuca, Steve Morrow, and Jesse Reyes. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds, Jack Reese. Introducing first out of the red corner, wearing the black with gold trim. His professional record, 29 wins, one loss, one draw, 15 wins coming by way of knockouts. 
Paren a Los Angeles, California y también Guadalajara, Jalisco, México. Damas y caballeros, aquí está Abner Mares. Across the ring, out of the blue corner, wearing the red, white, and green, Los Colores de México. As a professional, undefeated, 30 wins, one draw, 17 wins coming by KO. But in out of Los Angeles, y también with Amo Mexico. Presentando el invicto, Leo, el famoso terremoto. Did it, they announce them both? Did they announce them both and get out? I, I, did they announce them both? Get everybody out. Get your mouth. Jack is telling both quarters. Let's, Let's get go. them in here. Listen, this is high and this is high. I'm going to let them work. This, you just push it down, it's going to go up. Stand back. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. I gave you both instruction. Listen, obey my command at all times, protect yourself, fight hard, but fight clean, good luck. Yeah, the goosebumps. I was just thinking that myself, <laughs> brother. I, I, I've got the feeling we're in store for something special. You, you get a sense of it just crowd the way it is. You ready? They won't let them fight anything but a war, but let's see. They come right out, here comes. Mares and on Santa Cruz. Look out, your hand out, Abner. Leo, let him go, Leo. Jack Reese stop, stop, trying stop, to let them stop, work listen. out of it. When I say let him go, let him go. Fox. He doesn't want to be too busy in this fight. Here comes Abner Mares on the inside. Abner is already holding a lot. He's punching into a tire. Swarming and then grabbing. Swarming and then grabbing. Stop, this is stop. a situation where if you're Mahrez, you're, I you like you bend your you this okay? particular style of the referee who lets you work a little bit on the inside. Absolutely. And if you're Leo Santa Cruz, you want quicker separation. Here comes Mahrez, right off the bat. Santa stop, Cruz stop. Wait, blocking a lot, and Listen many of Mahrez's shots going wide. But he's busy, he's throwing, he's beating on the arms, he's bullying Santa Cruz, and that's what the judges are going to see right now. Stop, stop, step and back. This crowd is Bring into it. Jab by Mara's on the outside. Takes a hook and keeps coming forward now. You see how he can get clipped also, and you see how wide his shots are. Separate, separate. Opening round of 12, the premier boxing champions, Dave Bontempo and Joey Varner with you from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Good right hand by Barnes. It's a highly charged atmosphere. And the Santa Cruz faithful. Get a chance to weigh in. Good right hand by Mar. Mars was waving him on. Him He's calling him in. Keep coming. Keep coming. Santa Cruz comes and runs right into an overhand right. Body shots by Mars. Santa Cruz holding Leo, on. Let go. This is the fight Mars has to fight to win. He's got to smother Santa Cruz. You can't let Santa Cruz stop, control stop. the distance My, break, my brain, brain. step away from each other. Santa Cruz tries to operate from outside. The message from Morris could have been, I don't care about your stinking reach advantage. <laughs> I'll bully you. Okay. 
Ya, ya, puras reacciones rápidas. No te metas tanto todavía con él. No te metas sí, todavía. Sí, sí, Empieza a golpearlo al cuerpo. ¿Qué? Lo, lo ganamos, lo ganamos, pero no lo quiero, no quiero esa pelea. No necesitamos esa pelea. Ya vea, ya vea y, por, y conecta los dos en y salidas. Vale. Para los laterales, ¿eh? cuando lo tengas en la escuela. Laterales cuando lo tengas en la escuela. Ahora, right. allá, allá, allá. No te me aloques, no te me aloques. Todavía no es tiempo, ¿ok? Ya le hice una probadita. Ahora le hago una lo otro. Le vamos a pelear diferente, ¿ok? Vamos. Ya, ya, ya. Ya, ya, ya. One, two, one, two, come on. The battle for Los Angeles by way of Mexico continues in round two. Leo Santa Cruz, the taller fighter on the left of your screen, 30 and 0, 17 knockouts. Abner Mares, 29 and 1, 15 stop, knockouts. Stop, 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 my fault, my fault, my fault. Box. Santa Cruz cracked Mars, but nice old man right just as the round started. Let each other out, work out of there. But Mars resumes the smother technique. Bully on the ropes, stay on him, don't give him an inch. Don't give him a second to breathe. Mars squaring up. Let him go, Abner. Abner, let him go. Smothering Santa Cruz, little elbow. No warning, no foul. Now if you're Santa Cruz, you've got a double jab here. You've got a chance on the outside. If you get some distance, if you see the light of day, take advantage of it. There's the double jab by Santa Cruz. And this crowd is electric. It's Leo Santa Cruz who's moving up in weight, but when they see the two men side by side, he looks like the bigger fighter. Certainly the taller fighter as he's trying to utilize that. Even in the shoulders. The shoulders look a little bigger, a little broader. Better job in the last minute or so. Operating from distance. What about the pace that Morris is setting? It's a pace that I believe both fighters Nobody punch. keep up this entire fight. They're Step back. Action fighters. You know, when we were talking about the last five fights, you touched on Santa Cruz going 1,300 punches in, in a previous fight. This is, a, this is a pace that both fighters can maintain and keep for 12 rounds. Took a look behind you. The crowd was up. <laughs> up in round two. Usually you're up in the first round and then that adrenaline wears off, but they got back up in the middle of that action. So, Morris and Santa Cruz mixing it up. And they come to the end of an exciting round two. Take a look back at some of the action. You see Morris past Santa Cruz buried against the ropes. He's digging to the body, but Santa Cruz opens back up with his own body attack, reverses Morris. And there's that jab you see. Santa Cruz jabbing in the distance, but Mares just biting down on his mouth. He's squaring up and firing rapid shots in succession. Está ganando los rounds, pero estamos haciendo una guerra y no quiero una guerra. Quiero que tenés la calidad de boxeador que eres. Pero hace el paquete con mi salario, pero tienes a los amigos. Le van a pegar en la trepa. Hey. Ahorita nomás te le envías a morir y así saca los chingales con él. Saca los cinco horas. Third round, set for 12. Zamora's and Santa Cruz. 
hooked up in an intriguing battle. Calgary Championship bout. And the Leo chant coming up for those who like what he's doing outside. Mars is letting Santa Cruz fight on the outside more than he has in the previous two rounds. In the third round, last round, he's starting to give a little more space. And, oh, nice uppercut. And we're talking about Santa Cruz's need to find space, and he nailed Abner Mares and nails him again. Good body work here by Santa Cruz. Stop, 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 break. Santa Cruz on the outside has found a comfort zone in this round. The question I had about Morris last round, could he keep that up for 12 rounds, continually surging toward his opponent and working as hard as he was on the inside? Right now, no. He, he set a blistering pace, and that was... And he hasn't maintained it this round. If he could maintain that pace, that's the recipe to win this fight. But you see him even easing off the gas pedal, staying in the range of Leo Santa Cruz, not doing that bull rush blitzkrieg forward that he did do the first two rounds. That saw him with some success. Got to think that the adrenaline of this crowd propelled him to come out and sprint a little bit in those first two rounds. He's walked into some uppercuts in this round, too. A lot. He's coming in straight Stop. forward, chin up. I got an accidental butt with a little blood. A little bit of blood. All right? Marks. Right, there you go. The fighter He's got marks. with his body language looks for a call and gets it. Very important to note because the fight is official after stop, four rounds. Stop, stop, stop. Separate. Mark, also he's got a cut from the same butt on his right or left eye. And what Jack Box. Reese is indicating is if those cuts would end this fight after the fourth round, then you'd go to the scorecard to determine the winner. There would not be a knockout victory. And they open it up. Santa Cruz that 
stabilizes and gets this back into the technical battle he wants. Stop, stop, separate. Good jab by Santa Cruz. Stop. Heads come together again. Step away from each other, step back. Box. Faithful, feeling it. Good work on the outside by him. Santa Cruz is definitely getting the better of the exchanges. Stop, Neil. Him and the kidney, relax. Box. Santa Cruz able to impose his style of the ball. Leo, let him go, Leo. Stop, Two stop, rounds. stop. That's you. It's you holding on. Morris is pressuring, it's the fans' fight. Santa Cruz is in his mold. A pile of points and it won't be as exciting. So the script has Stop. read Santa Nobody Cruz. Punch. Good. Turn around. The last two. Step back. Temple Nobody and punch. Joey Varner with step you out, step out. at the Staples Box. Center and Premier Boxing Champions. I batted through four. How are you seeing this? Through four rounds. I've got it three rounds to one, 39-37, Leo Santa Cruz. Able to string some rounds together. Stop, stop, stop. Watch your head. You get hit in the head again? You get hit in the head? Relax. No blood, butts. Looping right by Alvarez. Good right hand by Santa Cruz. Alvarez trying to work inside stop, the jab. Stop. And I have to pick it up shot. a little bit. Pick it up. Santa Cruz complaining of a low blow there. That was part of the discussion that they had just before. Having to pull your left arm out of there. With the introductions, because Santa Cruz's belt line. Belt line, his trunks are a little high. Yep. Morris tried to time a right hand on Santa Cruz. It just missed. Good right hand by Santa Cruz. Stop. Separate. Let the him go. The thing with Morris now is he's relying too much on landing a big power punch. He's got 31 fights and 15 knockouts. He's, he's not a big, big knockout artist, not a power puncher. What found him success in that first round was that get off first and smother Santa Cruz. Don't wait for Santa Cruz to counter. 
He's waiting and he's getting picked apart. He took away the play in the opening round by so, storming. So both you guys smothering yeah, Sam Cooper is taking away the jab by being on the inside. But like you touched on, can he maintain that? Looked like he did for about a round and a half. Yeah, exactly. And then, and now he's in a situation where, hey, these guys in so many respects are mirror image fighters in terms of their, not only who they're representing, but they're both moderate punchers, maybe a little bit up over that, but they're not one-punch guys. Right. So they can't be in that must-KO territory. Right hand by Mares. And Santa Cruz gets off with the jab. See what a different problem that Mares has as we come to the end of round number five. Here we take a look back at some of the action from the sixth round. You see that nice jab cross in the overhead right by Leo Santa Cruz. Mares opens counters with some nice body work. And there it is again, right over the top. Mares trying to find back. Nothing really landing clear. Both fighters kind of just biting down on their mouthpiece and trading right at this point. But it was that nice jab overhand right by Leo Santa Cruz that started that engagement. Mars took it and came right back. Leo Santa Cruz is on a boxing roll in this fight, maintaining a distance from the outside against Abner Mares. by Santa Cruz. Stop, stop, Good turn stop. by Santa Cruz. When you tie it up like that, don't hit him. You okay? Good, box. But he hit him off of that. And gets a semi-warning. For Abner Morris, who came out blazing and had things where he wanted in the first round. Is that the way to turn it around for him? Or is there another way he should be getting inside? Yeah, that's his best success. That's his best chance to really take control of, the, of this fight, regain control of the fight. But the question is, is does he stop, have the gas stop, tank stop, stop. Oh, no. to maintain that style of fighting? You know, you see we've had a few accidental headbutts, but that's because the, the way Mares comes in leaps in when he's, when he's being pressured by Santa Cruz. He takes a step back and then he leaps back in. He's got to get past this three-inch lead advantage of Santa Cruz, but it's very hard for him to do because he's not really moving his head. He's just trying to come backwards and then counter off, off the aggression and the offensive tactics of Leo Santa Cruz. He had the most success in this fight in smothering Santa Cruz. Not doing this, not backing up, going forward. The recipe for success for Abner Morris from this point on is to come forward to bury his head in the chest of Santa Cruz, make it a phone booth fight, and just stay busy on the inside. But backing up, he's allowed Santa Cruz to dictate the pace, to land that jab, and to really control the tempo of this fight. And from a conditioning standpoint, what it takes to bend down, you know, to get inside, to continually work on the inside, and then we see guys betrayed by that from a stamina standpoint, because of what it will take to do what he should do. Absolutely. Santa Cruz on the outside, saying, I like this fight where it is. Let the crowd be enthusiastic, but not electric. And I'm boxing well. Mars just doesn't have the pop in his punch to fight this kind of fight right now. To try to counter Santa Cruz coming in and land big shots. 
He's not hurting him. He doesn't have enough power to hurt him. But, as we talked about, a little bit of a gas problem. We'll talk about that more in the second half of this fight. Take a look back at some of that action from the sixth round. You see Mars waiting. Mars comes in with a nice overhand right, but it's Santa Cruz that does a good job of turning him. He keeps punching. And you see Mars beckoning for the referee. The referee warns him. Another look at some action. There's that. That's really been the tail of the tape, the story of success for Leo Santa Cruz. It's been that jab right hand. It's controlled the distance, and it's been the money combination for him these last five rounds. And we start round seven. Second half of this fight. And Mares, Leo Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is the guy on the roll right now. Juarez trying to replicate that success know, he had in round one. Coming out, getting off first, backing Santa Cruz to the ropes. Leo, he's not no, staying no, no, as no, no, busy. The funny thing is the referees, it's Juarez that's holding and the referees warning Leo telling tell Santa Cruz to let go. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, come here. Both of you guys are rushing cool this. Stop then. it. Jack Fox. Reese tells both of them. You can tell from what he is saying that he will be very reluctant to take a point from either guy, even to warn them, rather than just give him a tip. Yeah. Good. You have to know the style of the referee when you're fighting, especially uh, in, in a fight like this, too, where how much leeway will you get on the inside? And the referee needs to know the style of the fighters. to understand that this is a boxer on the outside versus a puncher on the inside. Exactly. And let them do their business. Exactly. Good hook by Santa Cruz. Morris comes in. The heads come in. Pull out of there. Pull out. Come on. Pull your arm out. Abner. Left hook to the body from Santa Cruz. Morris has to fight tactically. Stop, where he wants, stop. My break, but he has to work other. there. Box. Some nice little footwork from Leo Santa Cruz, but nullified by Abra Morris getting that underhook and really just kind of hanging on to him as he moves. Good work on the inside by Morris. Perhaps he's got a second win. In round seven. Now a little bit more assertiveness. Trying to get to Santa Cruz. Cruz has been on a run. Santa Cruz. And the best round for Morris since the second. Question is, has it been enough? And here, let's take a look back at some action from the seventh round. And you see Mares doing a good job of staying busy in the pocket. Santa Cruz following up, clipping on the way out. Another accidental headbutt. But you see both these fighters 
biting down on their bound pieces, squaring up and obliging one another to just trade rapid fire succession body shots. Yeah. It's been a good run for the favorite Leo Santa Cruz on the right of your screen against Abner Mares, WBA featherweight champion. Get your own man there, Abner. boxing champions. Nate Bontempo and Joey Varner with you from the Staples Center. Remember how electric this crowd was when the fight started? Abner pulled the arm out, Abner. And they came out, and Mars was doing well. Santa Cruz has tamed them. He really has. Santa Cruz doing a good job of working stop, some stop, nice stop. angles in the pocket there. Relax. Mars is trying to stay busy Relax on the body, on the trying to tie him up. But Santa Cruz really nullifying that by pivoting and circling out. Now a battle of the jabs in which Santa Cruz has about a three-inch reach advantage. How would you assess him up to now as far as using his reach? He's doing a great job of it. Uh, Stop. You know, but it's not the great. same token. Let him Morris go. Morris is letting it. You know, Morris fighting backwards, moving back in Santa Cruz stocks. That doesn't help him beat the reach advantage. It actually plays into Santa Cruz being able to walk forward with that jab, stalk down Mars, and Abner. land that jab, cross jab, overhand, which he's landed frequently throughout the night. Let him go. Abner, let the ropes go, Abner. Good left hook to the body by Santa Cruz. Morris being given latitude to work on the inside by the referee. What you have to do is at least have one hand free. One hand for each of you. Referee will let you work. On the outside, Santa Cruz landed one of his better right hands. Congress tries to mug Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz finds some positioning for an uppercut. Nice turn. And they open it up again with a good right hand by Morris. Santa Cruz counters with one of his. Stop, my great, stop, step away. Let each other go. So, a little burst of action as we get to the end of ground eight. some of that action you see both fighters just squared up and there's the little angle from Leo Santa Cruz followed by a nice hook cross and Mares immediately ties up that left arm now look you see Mares back against the ropes and this is where they just open up oblige one another sort of trading Some concern in the corner of Abner Mars as we start round nine, scheduled for 12. How do you see it now to week? Seven rounds to one, 79 to 73 for the champ, Santa Cruz. You know, first that round for Mares. First, first round for Mares. He came out aggressive, and he also did so in the 
in the seventh round. He, I just didn't feel it was enough, though, you know? He didn't have his spurts, he had his flurry, but even in those spurts, those flurries, it was Santa Cruz that was landing the cleaner shots, but then he always, after these spurts or little glimpses of Mars, you know, this is something that he hasn't been doing, and that's coming forward. When he comes forward, he does better. Some urgency from Abdon Lawrence. Getting inside the Santa Cruz chair, and then lands a right hand. He dips. Watch behind the head, let him go, stop, stop. Watch behind the head. You guys have both been champions at 118 pounds. Both champions at 122 pounds. And they know what it's like to be in pressure situations and to have to deliver. Stop, stop. I'll break you. Sit back. Box. Stop, stop. Don't hit each other in the kidney when you stand there. Both your box. with her right hand. Morris does a lot better when he comes forward. He's a lot more effective. He eats a lot less punches. But it's when he does this, backs up and tries to counter that he ends up <laughs> in a firefight that he's not getting the better of. You look at how wide his shots are too. After Mars, and he's, when he sets down and comes in, he's almost squared up. He's very squared up. You know what he almost does? There's no, there's no thing they call an amateur box. Shoe shine. It's where you just get in that pocket and you just start, kind of start throwing those inside punches, nothing on him, just staying busy. And, and Morris is almost shoe shining when he gets on the inside. Hard to shoe shine a title belt. <laughs> He would want to tighten up his punches a little bit more. So, Santa Cruz on the outside sees it all in front of him as we get to the end of the night. They're loving it here. Weight. At 126 pounds, the names are 
Gary Russell, Lee Selby, the champion. Mark! Mark! Fight the winner of this. Vasil Lomachenko, one of your favorites. Standing right there. Nicholas Walters. Now, it's a it's good division. Favorite. Yeah, it's a stacked position. I'd like to see Santa Cruz uh, uh, Gary Russell. Yeah, and, and Russell's a pressure fighter. Yes, he so is. That would be. That would be Abner Morris maybe times 12 rounds. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I'd also like to see Walters versus Lomachenko. Starting to pick Morris apart now. Cut opened up via that jab of Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is really finding his range right now. Just peppering after Morris and tries to close the distance. Snapping his head back with a quick jab cross. Steps out, lands another jab. And Morris actually has cuts over both eyebrows, including on the right, outside of his right elbow, eyebrow, and outside of his left. He's also standing straight up, so he's not taking advantage of being a small guy. As fatigue sets in. And so, from the outside, in round 10, it has been the Leo Santa Cruz show. Right? Hey, bro, I want to see something. You gotta stop hitting him behind the head. That's a headbutt. Yeah. Hey, hey, bye. Hey, bye. He's fine. He's good. He's good. Want you to paint him? Paint him? He's gonna eat it and then you get him. Morris is 
never lost a decision. If it's going anywhere like I, I think it's going, he's, he's on track to lose with time. 30 and 0 versus 29 and 1. So Santa Cruz is breaking apart. A fighter with an excellent record. Ticks down on the end of round 11. Abner Morris is stop, running out of stop, time. Stop, separate, step back, stop at the bell. He's good, he's good. Tough fight to judge, right? Jab, jab, jab. One, two, three, tie him up. Okay, don't let him set up. Okay? Unless it's go around, you're stronger and you're in better shape. And here's some action from the 11th round. There's that jab that's been tattooing the face of Abner Mars. Double jab, followed by the cross. Mars tries to come in and eats another punch. Another look at it. Jab, jab, the hook at the end. Santa Cruz pulls outside the hook of Mars. Lance so straight right hand. It's really obliging him to fight at the range that Neil Santa Cruz wants to fight at. <laughs> On either side, they've enjoyed it. As we start the final the round, Leo Santa Cruz and Abner Morris tap it up. And the crowd will get up. Let everything out for this final round. Good jab by Santa Cruz. And good movement on the inside. Yeah, he's doing a great job of pivoting it out. Taking little angles, adjusting to that leaning body stop, pressure stop, that Mars is putting on. Other. And as he pivots in circles, he plants and fires to a turn to Mars as Mars turns in your face. Him. It's one of those special things you see because human nature would be on the back. He's yeah, attacking absolutely. Him. And he kept his place and moved on the angles. Stop, stop. Bring him up a little bit. On my scorecard, after Mars needs a knockout to win this fight. Did you give him other than the first? I gave him two total. Stop! My break. I gave him nine. It was a close round. I really think he could have gone either way. Um, I thought for that round, though, he, he turned it on. He was the pressure fighter. He brought it. He initiated most of the, most of the uh, 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 engagements. Well, I think they both played it equally, but because he was the initiator, he was pressing the action. That swayed it for me. I could see a judge easily giving it to Santa Cruz. My break, step away from each other. Example of a guy using his reach well. Uh, Santa Cruz jabs and he steps back and hits the incoming Mars with an Stop fighting, stop, stop it, stop it. Step back. Good hook here by Mares. Both in, nobody punch, let him go, step away. Morris oh. took one. Pull your arm out of there. For the privilege of trying to come in and find the miracle. Nobody punch, nobody punch. Oh. Not enough crack in his fist to find that miracle tonight. 15 knockouts and 31 fights. The territory. Stop, he stop, can't stop. afford to be in. Must knock out. Same for Santa Cruz. He's 17 knockouts and 31 fights. But Santa Cruz did the job on the outside. He maintained his composure when his crowd was on the verge of pandemonium early on. So they will go toe-to-toe -to -toe 
up to the final bell, and it's in the hands of the judges now. They get a nice, appreciative round of applause. Scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside Jesse Reyes has the bout 117 111 for Santa Cruz. Judge Max DeLuca has the bout 114 114 a draw. And Judge Steve Morrow has the bout 117 111 for your winner by majority decision Leon El Famoso Teremoto Santa Cruz and he puts it away nine rounds to three on two of the cards dead even on a third Max DeLuca or Max DeLoco? Because that, if that, if that was a draw, he is loco. Surprised by the way Abner came out in that first round, just bull rushing. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I was surprised that he was gonna box me, but he came straight out. He wanted to knock me out like I thought, but we we figured him out and we we got the win. When did you figure out that you could take control of the fight by controlling the range? I, when I was throwing the jab, I hit him with the jab and to the right, and so little by little, that win. We know we could take control. Before the fight, you told me, I think I can outbox 
Abner Mahdi, many people didn't believe you could do it. How were you able to put together such a complete performance? My dad, he, he told me that him, I've been in boxing, that's what we did in the gym, we, we boxed, because we know we could do it, but we don't want to, because we, we like to get the fans some great fights, but we had to box him, and that's what we did. The fans here in LA, impressive, over 13,000 here at Staples Center, singing El Rey, that means the king. You are the king for now. What comes next, a rematch, or do you want someone else? Uh, he wants a rematch, I'll give him the rematch. Uh, whatever, the, I want the best, I want to fight the best, I want the big fights. What does this moment mean to you when you look at the history of Mexican fighters and the history of great fights here in Los Angeles? I'm very happy, uh, and there's a dream come, no puedo, come on, uh, there's a dream come true, so I'm very happy, excited, and this was for all my fans that supported me, it was because of them. Thank you, Leo, thank you, Abner. And here we take a look back at how we got the decision. This was the tail early on. You see the accidental headbutt, but it started on an inside firefight between both fighters. They resumed the action in the pocket, trading big punches. You see it's Leo Santa Cruz who's landing the better of the engagements there. And here's round six. You see Santa Cruz, that was the story of the night. That jab crossed, that double jab finding its range in the eighth round. Bar is trying to pour it on, but it's the nice little footwork, the pivoting of Leo Santa Cruz. Backs Abner Mars up into the ropes. And there again, that right hand. Abner Mars obliging Santa Cruz by stepping backwards, waiting, waiting, giving Santa Cruz that distance to land that right hand. But here's the, 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 the action-packed fight that we want to see. Them trading the firefights in the pocket. Here's the ninth round. Santa Cruz again with that jab cross, backing up Mars, and Mars just biting down his mouthpiece, planting his feet, firing back. Both fighters squared up, trading shots in the pocket. Tenth round action, you see Mares. This is where Santa Cruz really started to find his groove. Just pot shotty Mares. Mares tries to press forward, running into jabs and crosses. And here the final fight, the final round, the twelfth round. Both fighters just obliging one another to stand in that pocket, open up trade punches as the fans are on their feet in the background cheering him on. Pokes and crosses, body shots, back and forth. And there he is, El Famoso, the king, the champ, a victorious Leo Santa Cruz. 122 and now a 126, so we'll see what he does with his 122 pound bonus. Some other fighters are seeking that fought earlier tonight. Hugo Ruiz and Julio Cesar Ceja, maybe hoping that he abandons 122 so they can have a shot at that. That's something that will be decided somewhere down the road.